a very warm greetings to all the viewers today we are going to discuss structure and function of atp let's begin the world of micro tantra i am your micro wizard dr dhruvil brahmbhai before we begin it's important for us to understand and know the timeline of atp so atp was discovered first in 1929 by Carl Lohmann later on after 20 years in 1941 Fritz Lippmann a scientist understood the mechanism and the role of ATP and said and gave us the term that ATP is an energy rich compound or universal energy of cell later on in 1960s 1964s Paul Boyer understood the mechanism of ATP and ADP cycle and since then with the help of molecular genetics genomic studies and proteomic studies now we are able to understand the mechanism of atp synthase the enzyme that encodes atp and through genomic and proteomic studies we are able to understand the sequences through which the atp synthase works so the learning objectives for today's topic is very defined and precise we discuss about the structure of atp understand how the atp is formed it is synthesized and resynthesized how it is utilized and finally we'll learn about the functions of atp so first of all it is important for us to know the structure of atp so atp the full form stands for adenosine triphosphate now the molecule looks very complex in nature and it is a slight bit of complex in nature so as you can see in the diagram it is a mixture of carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen and phosphorus atoms it is often symbolized with a bolt striking or with a star or energy burst shape representing that this particular molecule contains very high energy so atp is one such chemical which is essential for all the cells for energy purposes This ATP molecule is composed of three major parts. First part is the adenine, second part is the sugar, and third part is the phosphate atoms or phosphorus molecules. As you can see in the diagram, three phosphorus molecules, adenosine triphosphate. So we'll understand about the triphosphates first. There are three phosphate molecules which are attached to a sugar, which is a ribose sugar or a pentose sugar. that is attached with a nitrogenous base the nitrogenous base here is adenosine or adenine it is important for us to understand the difference between nucleoside and a nucleotide when a nitrogenous base is attached with a sugar molecule it is called as nucleoside but when a nitrogenous base attached with a sugar molecule is attached or bond with phosphorus atoms or with phosphate atoms then they are called as nucleotides so the, st the structure of atp molecule is quite simplified the first portion of the structure is made up of nitrogenous base adenine the second portion of the structure is made up of a ribose sugar and the third structure is linked with three phosphorus atoms now here as you can see in the diagram there are tables which are being given to the phosphorus groups now phosphorus are often denoted as phosphorus 1 2 3 or alpha phosphate group beta phosphate group and gamma phosphate group the alpha phosphate group is attached to the nucleoside in a such a way through phosphoric acid ester bond this bond is a very strong bond and it is very stable and highly energized however the beta and the gamma phosphate groups are attached with phosphoanhydride bonds So an ATP molecule is mixture of phosphoric acid ester bond and phosphoanhydride bonds. The beta and the gamma phosphoanhydride bonds are quite unstable although they possess good amount of energy. So here we we'll understand the structure and hydrolysis of ATP. So what basically happens in the cell that ATP drives endergonic reactions by phosphorylation transferring a phosphor phosphorus group or a phosphate group to another molecule when and where it is required 
the cell which gains or the recipient molecule which is requiring that phosphorus molecule is called a phosphorylated molecule here in the diagram as you can see the three phosphorus clouds which are being formed out of which the gamma group of the phosphorus atoms is going to get hydrolyzed when the gamma phosphate group is broken down it releases inorganic phosphate molecule and you obtain energy in other words let's say that when a cell possesses atp it is a charged cell on performance or on performing any activity it will require energy the energy is obtained from the atp hydrolysis so when atp is hydrolyzed a adp molecule that is now two phosphate groups are present so adenosine diphosphate forms and one of the phosphorus releases in the form of inorganic phosphate this when it happens it is a deficient energy cell so when a cell is energy deficient it requires energy on gaining nutrients or on utilizing metabolites or sufficient substrate it will again form adp to atp so how do we form atp so atp is formed by two major mechanisms substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative level phosphorylation here in the diagram you can see that there are overview of atp synthesis to generalize there are three major atp resynthetic pathways the first pathway is phosphocreatine system also referred to as pc system this is a aerobic process where creatine kinase is is catalyzing the reaction for formation of atp second system is lactic acid dehydrogenase system it is an anaerobic process where pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid with the help of this particular enzyme the third system again it's an aerobic process divided in three stages stage 1 is the glycolysis where two atps are generated per metabolizing of one glucose molecule stage 2 is tca cycle also referred to as citric acid cycle or krebs cycle where again two atps are synthesized stage 3 electron transport chain where maximum number of atps are generated the amount of atp that are generated varies from textbook to textbooks or reference books that you refer so ideally we have kept on an average of 34 atp molecules you will find 32 to 36 atp molecules in different textbooks here now let's look upon the hydrolysis of atp so when atp is broken down like i mentioned the last group of the phosphorus gets broken so when the last phosphorus group or the gamma phosphorus group is broken or hydrolyzed the atp to adp yields a energy the energy is approximately 7.3 kcal per mole thermodynamically this is represented with a negative symbol the cell gains energy by breaking of the last phosphorus at so atp can also be considered as a link between metabolism we require energy to require energy we utilize energy and to building up of energy or building up of energy also requires atp so this is also referred to as atp adp cycle when catabolic reactions are performed atp is converted to adp and when anabolic reactions are performed adp is converted to atp so like i mentioned atp is a link between catabolic and anabolic and hence plays a very important role in metabolism now let's look upon the second objective and the main objective is the function of atp So ATP has many functions it is referred to as universal currency of cell energy currency of cell it helps in muscle contraction movement in, uh, filamental movement axial movement it helps as an autosteric modifier it also is utilized in biosynthetic reactions it is also useful in nerve conduction it is also useful in active transport it also acts as a precursor of C AMP adenosine monophosphate and in coupling of reaction where it donates one or two phosphorus groups and sometimes even the adenine moiety is useful for 
energy reactions so when atp is considered as an energy as an energy currency of cell it acts as a common intermediate in many reactions it is a link between the energy requiring and energy producing reactions it is a universal currency of energy in all type of cells it participates in various metabolic reactions which brings us to a very important question why only atp and not other nitrogenous bases such as gtp utp or ctp so the answer is the other nucleotides such as gtp utp or ctp do participate in metabolic reactions but the energy that they release is quite less as compared to atp however gtp is utilized in gluconeogenesis and translational processes ctp is utilized in phospholipids and triacylglycerol synthesis and utp is utilized in glycogen synthesis so let's summarize this topic now in this tutorial we understood about three major portions the structure of atp like i mentioned it is made up of three portion nitrogenous base composed of adenine a sugar which is composed of ribose and three phosphorus groups atp is a high energy compound possessing two phospho anhydride bonds the hydrolysis of the terminal or the gamma phosphate group yields a negative free energy that is 7.3 kcal per mole that atp is a link between metabolic reactions that we understood through atp adp cycle and that atp transfers phosphoryl groups from high energy compounds to less energetic compounds so here i conclude this video tutorial i hope by the end of this tutorial you might have understood the basic function and structure of how atp works thank you